Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel to another video. Today I'll be sharing with you some tips for ensuring a smooth transition into online classes for the fall semester. Before I get started, I just want to thank Goodwall for sponsoring today's video. So Goodwall is a professional development network created for young professionals and students to showcase their achievements, connect with other like-minded individuals, and discover personalized opportunities in terms of scholarships and internships. On Goodwall, you can build your personal profile consisting of your achievements, skills, and ideas. For example, under my profile, you can find more information about my achievements as well as what I'm studying in university. As I said before, you can also browse scholarships, job opportunities, and internships, which is what I often spend my mornings doing. And overall, I think it's a good app for finding inspiration through a feed that's tailored to your interests. Now, since we're still in quarantine and we have been in quarantine for the past couple of months, I wanted to launch the hashtag Be Productive Challenge on Goodwall where you can join by posting different ways you've been staying productive this quarantine. And remember to tag me so I can feature your post in an upcoming video. So Goodwall is actually an app available on both Android and iOS, and you can download it by clicking the link at the top of the description box and find my profile by simply searching my name. And feel free to send me a message on Goodwall because I spend a lot of my time on there just browsing scholarships and really looking at what other people have achieved. So now let's move on with the actual video. I just want to clarify what this video is actually about. It's more so focused on how to ensure a smooth transition from where we are now to online courses in the fall, um, rather than just how to prepare for the upcoming school year. If that's what you are looking for, my best advice would be to download the syllabus for the courses you're taking and construct a study plan off that. But this video will be the five tips that I have for ensuring a smooth transition into online classes. My first tip is try taking an online class this summer. So for most students, classes should be wrapping up sometime around now. And with a lot of internships, research, and opportunities canceled this summer, you can dedicate this time to take a couple online courses. Whether that be a course you're genuinely interested in or you're just preparing for an upcoming school year, or fulfilling prerequisite requirements or graduation credits. If you are not taking summer courses that are affiliated with your university or high school, or if you're like me and you're just stuck in this awkward position where you just graduated from high school, but you can't really take summer courses at your university yet, then I recommend checking out the following websites. Those websites offer a wide range of courses from top universities around the world, and you can choose to take it as an audit, which means that you do not receive a certificate or pay around 60 to $90 for the certificate. I've been taking a couple courses online since mid-May on subjects related to public health and general sciences, and so far I've found my experience enjoyable and quite fulfilling. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can create a quote-unquote mock of what I would typically experience given that classes are online this fall. This is different from setting up your own schedule and setting off the syllabus or the textbook, because these classes have online lectures, readings, assignments, discussions, and exams, which I assume is what you'd typically expect in courses at a university level. In addition, taking an online class will allow you to pinpoint your strengths and weaknesses. For example, you might realize that you tend to lose motivation reaching the middle of the classes, then you may brainstorm measures that you can take to avoid this during the actual school year when your grades actually matter. In addition, you might also find your study method through your experience of an online class, which will make your studying a lot more efficient. So all in all, if you have the time this summer, commit to taking a few online classes and find out what works and doesn't work for you to ensure a smooth transition into online classes this fall. And moving on to my second piece of advice, which is to declutter, redo your workspace, and just make sure that you have one place dedicated to studying. This is super important now, given that we are restricted in the places we can go to study because I'm usually the type who likes going out and studying in the library or at a quiet coffee shop because I find that there's just less distractions that way. For instance, at the library, you often feel pressure to study because everyone around you is studying. And personally for me at a coffee shop, the aesthetics and the smell of the coffee beans just motivate me to study. However, as I said, that's something I can't do with COVID. So I kind of try to replicate a similar vibe at home. So I'm actually in the process of moving to a different room and creating a brand new space because after living in my current room for the past year or two, every time I come sit down at my desk and begin to work, I am also reminded of high school. And I'm not saying that my high school experience was bad whatsoever, 
but it's more so that I'm tired of the workspace and I wanted a change for university, almost replicating the vibe of moving into a dorm, but instead I'm just moving to a different room in my house. With that said, you really don't need to move or change something drastic about your workspace. Just make sure that it's clean, well organized, and you're only studying there and not watching YouTube or playing video games. The next tip that I have is to figure out an organization system that you will use for this upcoming school year. Now this might look different for everyone depending on how digital they've gone or if they're still printing out PowerPoint slides and taking notes on paper. Personally, this is something I'm still trying to figure out and I'm actually debating if I want to go completely digital and take notes on my iPad or if I want to implement a integration of both methods. For now, here is a little pros and cons list that I made if you're also struggling to decide. So with paper, I find that I memorize things a lot better when it's written down, but on the other hand, it's more of a hassle to organize and carry just a bunch of notebooks and papers around and I have to make the effort and go out of my way to buy notebooks, which is also not very environmentally friendly. Now with iPads, everything is stored in one place, so if I ever study elsewhere outside my house, I will only need to carry that one device. And especially in the app GoodNotes, it has an amazing organization system, so I won't have to worry about losing my notes or my PowerPoint slides. Also, I can take pictures directly from the internet or the lecture slides to put in my personal notes, but a downside with iPads is that my handwriting is not the best, and being who I am, I end up spending way too much time trying to fix my writing, but there was really no problem to begin with, except it's just not as neat as my, my handwritten notes on paper. But either way, for classes like psychology where it's not application-based and I won't need to do a ton of math-based practice problems, I will be typing those notes either in Notion or Google Docs, depending on if I'm able to figure out a good system that works in Notion. So as I mentioned, the pros and cons list, um, you can definitely reference that if you are also trying to make a decision or if you have made a decision about paper versus iPad, please leave a comment below about some of the other factors you considered and why you chose the one you chose. But if I end up going all digital, I will definitely have a place where I organize all of my files, including lecture, PowerPoint, notes, readings, and resources. I recently started experimenting with Notion, which is honestly one of the best productivity and organization apps I've encountered. While I can't really make a video about it yet, I definitely recommend checking out Study Collab's video on how she uses Notion. And also I believe she has a template for you to use, which is super helpful if you are new to Notion. Aside from organizing your schoolwork, I would also recommend figuring out a way to plan your time and track your productivity. In terms of planning, I will likely be using Google calendars to plan my day by time, and I will have a weekly running to-do list in Notion where I will refer to every now and then. And as for tracking productivity, I've been testing out a few different apps, such as Focus To Do, Forest, and recently I downloaded this app called Timing after seeing way too many ads about it in Chinese TikTok videos, so I gave it a try. To be completely honest, I haven't really figured out how to use it and it's low-key stressful to use, but there are also some really cool features like studying with your friends, tracking your progress, and sharing a little end of the day reflection. So I'll probably use it for a little bit more before I actually formulate an opinion about it. But essentially these time tracking apps are just there to see how long you've been productive for and just where the time went throughout the day. And my last and very simple tip is to figure out the apps that your institution will be using to facilitate your online learning. Might that be Zoom, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams, or any other online learning platform. And make sure you download it beforehand and play around and figure out how to use it. So that is it for this video. I will likely be making more videos about online classes and how I study and such in the upcoming months once school starts, but for now, that's all I have to offer. So with everything I mentioned in this video, I will personally be following through and doing all of these things for the next two months. So if you want to stay productive and keep each other accountable, then feel free to shoot me a message and we can chat about how we can motivate each other to study, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and check out more of my contents, and all of my social media, podcast, and website will be linked in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!